Starting off with my family slide, in the center um, I have my parents with my mother, Jean, uh, she's here in the audience, and my father, Gary. He wasn't able to come because he works in construction, helps pay, pay, pay the bills. Um, the bottom left is my uh, half-sister, um, Becca. She's 12 years older than me, but we are like, um, like really close with one another, and she always comes to all of my school functions. and. We're just, we're just like best friends with one another. Um, the top right picture is my grandfather. He's from my mom's side and he's a really scholarly person and uh, he holds himself up so high and I, I always look up to him um, whenever, however I should act. And my grandmother, um, she is the one that uh, brought me into gardening and being very holistic and um, having that kind of lifestyle, but she's not in the, any of these pictures, but she um, is in our presence. So um, my extracurricular activities at school um, in my freshman year and sophomore year, I was a part of Amnesty International, um, head, head letterer writer, um, and it's, um, it's just like a, a club that you can bring awareness to uh, human rights issues. Um, I was part of the Boy State um, program in my junior year where you learn about um, the American government by doing the government. Um, I was a part of La Raza, Isabel's club, the last two years where you learn about um, Hispanic culture and issues that are going on in that, um, in that realm. Um, in my junior year, I was trained to do CPR um, with the AED machine, um, so that was a really great experience with Dr. Soroka on a weekend. Um, debate club started this year with Shafe. I was able to speak my voice and say my opinion on certain topics. And in my junior year, I started my own club, um, Club Opportunity, and uh, we got to talk about um, things to prepare ourselves for college. So, Garden Club. I put um, club opportunity to the grave in September of this uh, last year and brought a live garden club um, and you can see here I just uh, I had a lot of help with uh, like Andreas and Jarrell putting the greenhouse together um, I had financial support from my parents uh, here I'm recruiting members at our back to school night um, a group picture of all of our members um, in like January of this year uh, more recruiting um, Selfie of the creator. <laughs> um, and uh, this is part two. This was towards like the, the end of, or the um, like February, March. Uh, we got more active in our school, doing school events like for Earth Day. We did raffling of um, garden supplies and we had samples of our spinach and chard. Um, and Mr. Libby was able to donate his own money to buy us these um, shirts for all the members, so I want to say thank you to him. My hobbies I have going on whenever I have a vacation. <laughs> um, we have this wonderful retreat of a cabin in Tahoe where my grandfather built, um, and it's a wonderful place to go hiking. Um, we, I always love to deck out my house. That's what it looks like every uh, December. Um, and then we had a donation food for uh, canned food. I love to ride my bike, um, kayak, uh, ski, snowmobile, garden there, um, clean up blight either by volunteering or by pay. Um, I love to wakeboard behind our ski boat, camp with the, our tents, um, and just cruise on our yacht um, either by driving or just um, anchoring. Um, and I absolutely love to use our, my passport. I've used it about 10 times, and it's just a wonderful time to travel. Um, 
my friends. We call ourselves the Rose Squad because during lunchtime we always like to poke each other um, and make memories. Uh, this, oops, my bad. Um, so, oops, come on. So this was uh, our senior prom this year, junior prom last year. Um, a whole bunch of my friends are part of the garden club, so we always have fun every Friday. Um, just a whole bunch of Maj Paz, Jarrell, Samaya, Yusenia, all of them. I mean, I can't name them all. <laughs> There's too many. Um, this was Twin Tuesday for Spirit Week. We just love to have fun together. And they make my four years wonderful. Um, my sports, I was, uh, did one and, one and only sport for my high school career. I did cross country. Um, and it was just a wonderful time to uh, be a part of a team and help encourage one another um, when we're at our races um, as a leader and as a helper, um, even if I'm not one of the um, presidents. So uh, my aspirations, I love to help people even if I'm having a horrible day. I always put the others before me, um, helping and making their day first. So I would love to see um, I would love to see myself as a RN um, helping one another and help them get out of the hospitals quickly. Um, I hope to keep my hobbies going with my gardening and I'd love to get a pilot license because I find that really interesting. And a possible idea would be to create my own hospital because the systems that we have right now with Kaiser and all of these different organizations, they're just in for the money. I don't want that. Um, so I hope to, I, I mean, I. I have a really passion with Patch Adams, I and mean, that, that was a great movie to me. Um, so my mentors, the last four years, these people have really helped me um, throughout my, uh, my career. Um, I have Miss Stevens. She was um, the one that uh, initially tested me for my learning disability in sophomore year. You're probably like, learning disability? Yeah. Um, uh, Miss Maseko, she took me on um, after Miss Stevens was uh, too busy. And she's always helped me with different assignments and throughout my uh, last three years. Ms. Graham, she's always been with me. Um, she's had my back. Uh, we've always had that sort of connection the last four years. And Mr. Libby, I've had him the last two years. And he was my advisor for Club Opportunity and Garden Club. And he's just like my father and at school. Aww. And Ms. Graham's like my mother at school. So it's, it's a great relationship. <laughs> taking the initiative to group settings and adjusting to an unexpected change. I was once someone that was not often exposed to technology, asking for help uh, even though I wasn't able to use uh, it to my full advantage to learn new things or communicate with others. Finally, I was once an unsure, uncomfortable person that would dread speaking to a crowd that with presentations such as this one, but I have grown into that and now I am successful. So now starting with this quote, academic achievement was something I'd always sought for as a form of reward. Good grades please my parents, good grades please my teachers, and you sew them all together for approval. So you're basically doing it to help yourself, your parents, and your mentors being your teachers. Starting off, um, in my sophomore year we had to research a career that we found an interest in, we chose surgical tech. Um, I was with Christina and our board was very artistic. Um, it, but it didn't have a lot of information because we didn't put the time into researching and getting different um, information to persuade people um, to find an interest in surg surgical tech. Um, you can see here our, our paper how we were going to be presenting and there just wasn't enough information to get the idea across. Um, so we, we just didn't take our time to, to figure out what, like in depth. But, now, with my senior, de my senior project being um, Capital Punishment Essay, I mean, this is a well-rehearsed, researched essay being eight pages long with in-text citations and many different resources to prove my point and my opinion of the death, of the death penalty and um, why it should continue on. Um, it took many hours, many resources, being books, being online, um, different uh, technologies to be used, like computers from home and at school, and it was just a really well rehearsed and used um, way of my resources. And in my um, career field, I would have to research 
um, different diseases that my patients may have, um, like in the books or um, at the library, and I would have to figure out what do they have, what, what's their condition if I am pondering that. So my next quote, the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. Imagination, Albert Einstein. So in freshman year, we did a biology experiment. We had to create um, a hypothesis, test it. So we chose um, to test a variety of different garbage bags. And um, we had a variable of bags in the sun and a variable of bags in a classroom without sun. And we were to test um, if the sunlight affects the way, the amount of pounds the bags hold. And it was proven correct. Um, it, they hold about six pounds less um, exposed to sun. Um, so it was a really interesting project, but it didn't really, um, it didn't affect people. Like it, it was just an interesting idea to research, but it didn't um, affect the masses. But coming to um, my senior year, we had our project Eddie, where we had to create a product that would help um, the uh, differently abled citizens to fit in with the society. So we created BBH, Room and Vacuum Helper, um, and it was basically like a cup that you uh, were attached to your chest with suspenders, and um, they would be able to put a, a, a vacuum staff or um, a broom staff and walk forward, and they would be able to um, function normally with a um, a broom or vacuum as anybody else. So it just, it was really interesting how it was, we were able to help somebody else, whereas with my experiment, um, it was just an assignment that we were having fun with. But with um, this, we used the Newton's third law, where you walked forward um, in our case, and the energy from your chest was coming out. Um, and then we had the third class lever, which is very similar to the elbow, like this. Um, when it's uh, in the cup and the staff is going down. And then we had the first class lever, which is like a wheelbarrow with the tire in the front. It's the least efficient lever, um, FYI. But we had, and we also had the force of friction where um, the bristles would be going forward and the cement would be coming against you. So you'd have that uh, sort of resistance. Um, and with that, we had to take measurements um, to, and to scale down uh, the, the, the product to fit onto this um, piece of paper, which is, uh, <coughs> took a lot of conversions. Um, so what new technologies, uh, what new technology does is create new opportunities to do a job that customers want done. So in my freshman year, I had a visual arts uh, PowerPoint that I had to create with a team. We had to research a artist and figure out all of their background information and their favorite art and why they do that. Um, and as you see here, it's it's like a paragraph on a slide. Um, I got the two P's mixed up maybe. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's not the way to, to have it done because it just is too much words to read in a certain amount of time. And I use very basic open office. Obama was very sad about that. Um, <laughs> but now coming into senior year, I was able to use PictoChart, which is a very interesting free program that you can get. Um, it's a way of advertising a certain um, idea that you can get your, uh, your mind across. And we used that in the Project Eddie, where we had to uh, select a country and figure out their health equity issue and, um, and make life better for that country. And also, when it came to Summit Day, we had to trade um, our exports and imports with other countries or groups um, to, to make um, our means correct and to help our GDP uh, per capita as well, which is the income. So, and with that, um, I would have to uh, work with others and use my new technologies in my career which um, each year, I mean, technology just keeps advancing. And with the field of RN, there's a lot of tools that I would be using to make my life easier and to help the patient get out quicker, um, to help my job uh, go faster with um, new technologies. So the next quote, you can have brilliant ideas, but if you can't get them across, your ideas won't get you anywhere. So my, my teamwork, my team um, in freshman year, we uh, were in Health 9 with Ms. Graham, and we had to teach a class 
of a certain topic. Um, we, we chose literary terms, uh, being like simile, uh, personification, just to name a few. And the, the teamwork and the communication just was not there. We didn't use any um, technology to communicate with one another. We didn't use um, the advisory as it should have been used correctly. Um, after school wasn't used, homes. Um, it just, it, we, we weren't connecting the dots of how to work as a well-worked team um, in our freshman year. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I was, I had the leadership role, but it just, it wasn't a leadership. Um, but coming to be the change, I took the leadership role once again, but uh, we, co we contacted with one another during advisory. Um, we had to create uh, a prod or an idea of to get our mind across to, to affect the masses of um, an issue that we had um, that we had that we wanted to talk to talk about and we chose organic farming and when I went to Cabo San Lucas um, for my spring break I talked to the head chef I interviewed him of his idea um, about organic farming um, we created uh, flyers to notify people about our school event that we'd be doing to talk about people or to talk about organic farming to people. Um, and I also did um, a conversation with um, an advisor in at an orphanage in Uganda, Africa, through Facebook. So I got their idea across it as well. So with this, I'd be working as a team in my um, field because. That, that's the team setting to help um, get the patient out quicker and to work as a well-oiled engine. Um, so I'm not doing the same amount of work as somebody else so we can be uh, uh, efficient. Um, my quote, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. So in my freshman and sophomore year, I was always a leader, like I said. I mean, people, for some reason, people always said, oh yeah, Lucas, I, you're a great person, but you're gonna be the leader. You probably all said that before. Um, <laughs> um, but I could I might have not been the best efficient um, leader. I, I mean, I, I was a leader in the classroom, but coming to my, my junior and senior year, I took that leadership role out into the world. I, sp I spread my um, awareness, I spread my power to help others. So with my, uh, with our uh, sophomore year, uh, Doja Lib was going through the charter process wanting to get, um, to get into that system. And there was a lot of ways to do public speaking um, at the meetings. But I never, I, w I was never comfortable with that. Um, I never did that. But when it came to my junior year, I was the Boys State Delegate at the California State um, uh, Capitol. Uh, I did a lot of public speaking in front of people, as you see there. Um, I created my own entrepreneurial business in my junior year um, summer break, uh, painting curbs to make them look better, as that's the original and then that's like the finished product. Um, just making some money, and then I was a protester um, the last three years at the state capitol, um, stopping the tunnels to save the Delta. Um, and I also uh, started my own club from September 5th to September 29th. It was a startup from nothing to something that was a well-working club, and I, I always pat my back on uh, about that. And I was always in, I was in the, the Country Cross of Times twice about that, um, and I was the I was a finalist for the Youth of the Year of Antioch, as you see on the bottom left picture. Um, leadership, I took a leadership role for my senior year, being uh, the senior class president. So we always worked together as a well-worked team uh, to get certain tasks done. Um, and with my garden club, as you see here, there's eight different boxes right there. There's eight different boxes, and they, they're all filled with dirt. And each box is three feet by four feet, and they're a foot um, depth. So we had to figure out how much dirt we would need to fill up all these boxes. So we'd multiply those together, and then we'd multiply that by um, eight boxes to figure out how many square feet we would need um, of soil. I've gone to city council meetings many times in the last four years to voice my opinion on certain topics on the agenda. Um, I'm the school site delegate of Dozier Libby. I go to the um, school board twice or uh, bi-monthly to talk about how our school's doing. Um, I go to the crime prevention meetings 
once a month, each month, to um, go to, to try to help crime and stop it. Um, and at my um, neighborhood, we, we're in a neighborhood watch group, and there's about 20 homes. And just this year, I was elected the co-captain of our group. Um, we've been a part of it since 2007, so that's, that's a really big honor. Um, so, restating my thesis. I was once a follower, but I have grown into someone that steps up taking the initiative to group settings and adjusting to unexpected change. I was once someone that was not often exposed to technology, always asking for help, but now I'm able to use it to my full advantage to learn new things or communicate with others. Finally, I was once an unsure, uncomfortable person that would dread speaking to a crowd, but with all the presentations, just like this one, I have built upon my skills to communicate successfully. So, my final quote that I created in my sophomore year, and you will probably hear it once again at my graduation speech, but I had to say it. Um, I'm no longer going to be the best. I'm going to be my best. So I'm not going to compare myself to my other peers of what I am or how I'm doing because of because um, it's really hard to, for me to do that with my learning disability to keep at the same level as all of you. Um, I, I just take longer doing certain things, but I, I figured out that I have, to, I have to focus on myself before others. Um, so this is what that quote really means to me. So my final slide, I just want to say thank you. Um, this is the second to last slide, so don't uh, clap quite yet. <laughs> my, my next slide is the second to last. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everyone, um, to God, parents, faculty, friends, my peers that are here today, um, my mother is here today, Dr. Libby, Dr. Dozier, the taxpayers of California, Section 504 for my disability, um, Jerry Brown, the armed forces, and the American government. And I just want to say um, thank you to all the faculty that are here today. Um, and I just want to say thank you to um, the establishment that we have um, of Dozier Libby. I mean, it was, it was just an amazing experience. I'm sure a lot of you would say that um, right now. It's, it's taught me a lot of things. It, 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 I mean, it, it, it brought me to a lot of great people um, in my life. And I just want to say thank you to um, everyone that's here today. Um, I'm ready for my questions about my evolution. <laughs> Unexpected change, unexpected change, right there. Um, I will go back to, uh, can I go back? Sure. Um, the unexpected change. So, let me go. Da, da, da. It was right here. Ah, yes, yeah, so you, you probably were guessing it about how we created alliances. Um, so, Guatemala. Guatemala was a D3. Um, 
we needed quite a bit of help um, from other countries. Um, and to taking that idea of wanting help, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, we had the DEVCOs, I believe it was. Um, and we didn't have a lot of resources to give, to give out. When it came to Summit Day, um, we, in our minds, we had all of our plans and all of our um, alliances lined up uh, from the past um, week or so, or a few days, especially. Um, and when it came to Summit Day, where it was, it was just a very um, time-constricted amount of time where we can work with one another, we thought that it would really help to form those alliances before. Um, <laughs> I mean, we, we felt that we, were, we had like that, that solid, but uh, there was a lot of um, alliances that we had that fell apart um, for what we had to um, give out and what we wanted. Um, so that would be my um, unexpected change. Because okay. I, I would say that's quite unexpected. Mm -hmm. I hope you do too. <laughs> yes. And then going back um, to some of your first slides, um, like right after your family slides and your friend slide. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted somewhere in here. I just okay. So you're going to be doing nursing. So let's yes. go, go. Keep going. Go no. forward. To uh, the no, no. Oh, to the nursing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what is your plan on how you're going to do that? Where are you? What What are your next steps? Sure. Yeah, I, I can see that as a curiosity. Yeah. Um, well, I I've already um, applied and uh, signed up for all of my classes that I'll be taking at Los Madonos College in Pittsburgh. Um, I believe there might be one class in, at their Brentwood facility, but all of the classes that I'll be taking for about the next year and a half, um, they say, will be um, preparing, completing my prerequisites for um, the nursing program, either at the LMC facility um, or at uh, the Napa facility. Um, and I believe there's one in uh, Modesto as well. But that, that's what I'm doing right now for the next, um, say, two years. And, and then, then transfer to a four year somewhere? Uh, yeah, but th they're, with that, um, I would be able to go to the, the nursing program after I do my prerequisites, and I would have a license as an RN. But I could then go transfer to another school to um, get a higher degree of nursing, okay. or like a specialty. Okay. Okay. I love how you were very eloquent in talking about collaboration and teamwork and how that is going to serve you well in your nursing career. I'm sure. Um, so my question is kind of two parts. Number one, is there an emphasis in nursing, a special field of nursing that you're interested in? And number two, because you are such a great community leader and activist, how can you be an activist in your Okay. Um, well, the special field that I um, sort of have my eye on, I mean, it, it's just senior year. I mean, my it ideas <laughs> will definitely change. Um, but my, my idea would be um, to either be just um, like a general practitioner, like work, working along with uh, the nurse there, um, or, I mean, I. I I just really don't know, but um, maybe in the OR, I, I really don't know, actually. <laughs> that, and that's fine. You'll be able to experiment and research all these different fields while you're going through. Sure. And your second part to the question, um, how I'm such like community-oriented um, the last two years, I'll, I, I see myself taking that into my career, not specifically just nursing, but um, if I build myself up to um, a, a doctor, um, and then I decide, um, like a, a few years down, quite a few years down the road, I decide I don't like the way that the, le the working conditions are in the uh, community that we have, like the Kaiser, the John Muir, they're, like I said, they, they just seem like they aren't out there to help the patients. Like with my mother, she has gone through so many doctors, 
and so many nurses, and they just, they aren't there to help. It just feels like, they, it's just, it's horrible. Um, and I want to fix that system. I want to create my own system to do it the way that it should be done, either in America or creating or helping uh, the needy or the orphanages in Africa um, or wherever it may be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas.